Hi, in this video, I'm going to be reading an email I received from a viewer and doing my best to answer it. As always, if you have any advice for this person, please leave a comment in the comment section below. Remember, people read the comments, and so every time you leave a constructive comment, it really helps other people. Let's go ahead and open up the email here. And the person's name is Sudeshna, and the subject is Tips on Problem Solving. Hello, I am Sudeshna. I am 17 years old and I've recently completed my high school. I am studying maths on my own. While I feel confident that my basic high school math, I am attempting to move to advanced high school maths. Currently, I am studying number theory from Elementary Number Theory by David M. Burton. Though I do not lack necessary resources which are easily available through books and YouTube, I find myself stuck when solving problems. I feel I have a good grasp on my concepts on a particular topic, but when I move towards the problems, I get stuck with one problem and spent hours on it, which is in no way helping me improve. However, when I see the solution to the problem, I immediately can know why is the particular solution the solution, so that the problem, and at times I do find myself trying to think of a different way to approach the problem. I'm actually not able to figure out what exactly I am lacking. I think it's about improving problem solving skills. So can you please suggest how I can improve my problem solving skill? P.S. Now the obvious answer might be solve more problems. But what is the use of doing more problems when you take a lot of time on one problem and end up looking at the solution instead of trying on your own? So this is a great question. This is an amazing question because this is something that I think everyone experiences when studying mathematics, especially when they get to harder, pro harder subjects like number theory, abstract algebra, real analysis. I mean, this is something everyone deals with. So I do have some advice. So first of all, um, you mentioned that you do have access to the solutions. You kind of indicated that in your message by saying, when you get stuck, you're able to look at the solution. So that <laughs> that is huge. The fact that you have the solution is incredibly helpful. So a couple of things. So first, before you start doing the problem. Like when you first read it and you're trying to figure it out, the first thing you should do is go back through the section and try to think about what are the key results in that section. So if you have a couple of propositions and theorems, can you use those results to do the problem? Many times the answer is yes, but sometimes there's still like an extra step missing that you don't see and that's what makes it hard. So another thing you can do is look for the key techniques in that section. So focus on just that section. What was covered in that section that's different? What key technique is used in the proofs in that section that is different? How can you incorporate what you learned in that particular section to tackle that particular problem? And I think that really makes a difference, okay? And then you should spend some time on it. We talked about spending hours and hours and hours on a problem. That's okay to do, and that's something that we're all, I, I don't want to use the word guilty, but perhaps guilty of doing, because it's really easy to you know, get stuck on a problem and say, I don't want to quit, I don't want to give up, because that's how we are, right? As math people, we are people that don't give up. So it's very normal for you to do that, but at the same time, you need to pry yourself away from that and then just cheat and look at the solution after a certain amount of time. After you feel like you've exhausted all of your resources, you've really looked in that section, you've looked at the key results, you've spent a considerable amount of time you know, looking at the theorems and the techniques and you still can't figure it out, then go to the solution. Now what I want you to do is, after you look at the solution, it's not just about, oh, I get it, I understand the solution now. It's not about that. You really have to just take it a step further and analyze the solution. Understand every single step in that solution. Then what you want to do is you want to rewrite that solution on your own without looking at the solution. What's often going to happen is it's going to feel like you're memorizing the solutions, but you need to take it another step further. You need to ask yourself, how would I, as an individual person, come up with that solution on my own without looking at the answer? And that takes a lot of deep reflection. Like you really, really have to think about why the problem is that way. How in the world would you figure out this problem if, again, if you didn't have the solution? Most of the time, in fact, in many, many cases, the solutions are just simple consequences of the definitions in the section, the results in the section, whether they be lemmas, propositions, or theorems, 
or the key techniques in that section. So most of the time, it's really that simple. Unfortunately, it's not always that simple. A lot of times there's some weird technique or there's a proof technique that is just something that wasn't covered in the section, but it only comes up in the exercises. And those are the cases where, you know, having that solution and saying, oh, that's a really cool technique. So whenever this happens, I can do that. As a simple example, whenever you have a finite set, you can always find the maximum of that set. That's something that comes up over and over when you're doing proofs with metric spaces. So there's countless examples like that, or like the notion of adding zero in calculus in some clever way to, you know, do some delta epsilon proof. So those are my pieces of advice that I can give you. Always try to go back and think about what are the key results, what are the key theorems, what are the key techniques in that section? How can I use those results, techniques, et cetera, that were given in that particular section in order to solve this particular problem or proof? Then after you've exhausted all your results and you've spent a considerable amount of time on it, whatever that means to you, right? Considerable amount of time means basically you've, you've used all your resources. Then you can look at the solution. When you look at the solution, the first step is to actually understand the solution. Do you understand all of the steps? The second step is to try to reproduce the solution on your own. And perhaps the third step, maybe you can interchange steps two and three, is how would you as an individual person with just the book and just the resources you have come up with that solution on your own? And in many times, and in fact, unfortunately, in many times, you'll look at it and you'll say, there's no way I would be able to figure out that specific technique on my own. I'm just not good enough. And you're going to feel that way. And let me just tell you, it's okay to feel that way. That's what math is about, right? Like you see these techniques and you see these reoccurring ideas and you apply them to multiple problems. And the more math you do, you talked about doing more problems, solve more problems. Solve more problems does work, but it's very, very important to learn from those problems you've solved. What are the key techniques in those problems and how can you come up with those techniques and use them on your own? And again, if you can't come up with them on your own, at least you have those techniques in your toolbox, right? There are techniques that you can actually use to solve problems in the future. So hopefully uh, my answer made a little bit of sense, kind of a rant. Um, this is a very unprepared video, um, but that's, I think, the best way to learn. You know, I used to have this teacher. He passed away uh, several years ago, brilliant mathematician. He was, he was from India, very big man. And, you know, when we were doing induction proofs, he would always say to us, it's really, really important to, you know, after you do an induction proof, to, to look at the induction hypothesis and think about it. And not just like, this is where you use it. Think about why the proof doesn't work when the induction hypothesis is taken out. Why can't you complete the proof? What is the reason it fails? And really, you can apply that technique to all the proofs you do. When you have those solutions in front of you, really think about the solutions. Take time to digest the solution. Make sure you can redo the solution on your own, understand every step of the way, and try to understand how a person would come up with the solution. And again, many times you're gonna find that there's key techniques that weren't in the section that you feel like you couldn't come up with on your own, but that's okay. You now have a technique that you can apply to future problems. So kind of a rant. Um, I hope this video made sense. I hope this has helped someone. Math is tough. It's beautiful. And if you have any advice for Sudeshna, please leave a comment in the comment section below. Um, I feel like doing some math like right now after, after talking about this. Let's go do some proofs. Good luck.